The following program is a presentation of BaseNet Internet Television, bringing you topics in the way mainstream media won't. BaseNet Internet Television presents As We See It with Fred Boaz and friends. In Los Angeles, I'm Gene White. And now, to our studios in Boston. Thank you, Gene, and hello again, everyone, and welcome to another exciting adventure of As We See It, show number 43, being recorded on Sunday, May 27th, 2012. It's Memorial Day weekend, but the gang is all here, minus one. Holly is away visiting some relatives for the holiday weekend, so we are Hollyless. But I guess it's not quite time for mistletoe and holly yet anyway. Wait, so wait, 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 wait. Could you say that? Hollyless? Hollyless? Yes. Yeah, it's, say that? It's hollyless. We're, we are hollyless, but you missed my punchline. It's not time for mistletoe and holly yet anyway, so we could do without her this week. Oh, okay. But Holly uh, was around for this week's Crashing Glass podcast, so any of you that can't go your week without listening to Holly, just listen to the latest episode of Crashing Glass podcast, which, ironically enough, was their Memorial Day show. We here on As We See It are not really doing a mem- Memorial Day show, but the ladies on Crashing Glass did, and it's called Navy Check. Their guest this week was actually a former Navy person, and uh, they had quite a good discussion with her. So for your fill this week of Holly and Jill, listen to Navy Check on the Crashing Glass podcast. Anyway, from Boston, Massachusetts, I'm Mid Jupin, as usual. And out there in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania, we have Fred Boaz. Holly Hurley is on vacation. Out here in Brookline, Mass, we have Larry the Lobster, and out way out there, as we determined before we went on the air, about 3,200 miles away, in Los Angeles, California, Gene White. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Hey, Happy guys. Day to you. Hey, it's the Boys Club today. The Boys Club. Everybody going out to there to see their parade this weekend? No, I got to work. Yeah. I'm going to be watching mine on TV. There you go. I don't even I don't even know if Brookline has a Memorial Day parade. If they do it, it might be tomorrow. Well, yes, it would be. It would probably be on Memorial Day. Well, we had uh, the casino by me had fireworks way into the light, uh, night last night. We could hear them from the house. That was oh, that's fun. Except, the, except my dog was in the bathroom, so. Yeah, I guess the dog probably didn't like it, right? All right. So how about a Memorial Day edition of Lobster Tales? What do you have for us, Larry the Lobster? Okay, number one is Donald Duck was banned from Finland because he didn't wear pants. A similar incident occurred in the Finnish town of Kemi. A few years earlier, the international press had gleefully exaggerated the story with headlines such as Finland bans Donald and Donald vanishes from libraries, but it was really due to his lack of pants and questions about his marital status. Number two, you do not need a license to fish on your own land, but a hunting license is required to hunt on your own land. Number three, you may not sing in the bathtub. Number four, dynamite may not be used to catch fish. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Number three, you may not sing in the bathtub. Yeah, where? Where or how or what's this all about? Two, three, and four are only valid in Pennsylvania. Well, you should have said that. In Pennsylvania, you cannot sing in the bathtub. Number two is very true. In Pennsylvania, you don't need a fishing license to hunt on your own land. Unless it's restricted, you you do need a hunting license. So that's very true. As far as not singing in the bathtub, uh, the first I've heard of that, I'll have to check that out. And I don't think you can use dynamite to catch fish anywhere. No, yeah, I I think that's pretty much nationwide, if not worldwide. You know, I saw this last one, and it, right away it made me think of Jaws. Because remember in oh, Jaws, yeah, when, yeah. when the people yeah, didn't go- they didn't they do that? Didn't they uh, feed it dynamite or something? Yeah, well, they well that was um, a, it was it was actually a uh, oxygen canister. They oh, boarded. that's right. Yep, yep. Actually, no, it wasn't an oxygen canister. Actually, uh, it was more near the end of the movie, and what the sheriff Brody took a full scuba tank, stuck that in the shark's mouth, and then with his rifle he fired at the scuba tank, and of course the shark well, blew up. Pi- I think it was his pistol, but that's neither here nor there. Well, and, rifle, pistol, whatever. And that's not a very accurate 
portrayal of it anyway because scuba tanks, just like Scott Air Packs that fire departments use, is not oxygen, obviously. It's just, com it's just air, and air right. wouldn't explode even by firing a projectile at it and puncturing the scuba tank. It's not going to explode because it's not oxygen. It's air. It's not flammable. So that's, that was just portrayed for Hollywood anyway. A scuba tank would not explode. Of course, it's Hollywood. It's supposed to be spectacular. So yeah, they, exactly. They yeah. And that it was. Was I remember right after he hit the scuba tank, that whole shark just blew up. Okay, Larry, what does scuba stand for? Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. And who invented good? it? I don't know who invented it. Mr. Scuba. Jo Jacques Cousteau invented the scuba tanks. There's another little known fact. See, Larry? Okay. There you go. So, right. for, so Fred, you're going to do your homework and you're going to find out if it's illegal to sing in the bathtub in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Yeah, I will, and I'm going to find out. I'm going to try and find as much as I can about that because I like I like to see how what what are they, what are they going to do? Have somebody rat you out? Hi, my father's singing in the bathtub. Yeah. Come right of a ticket. That that very well could be one of those ridiculous old laws like that one that we went over on an older episode of this show about how in New Jersey, if you were going under 25 miles an hour, you were supposed to have somebody in front of you swinging a red lantern. You know, so one of those kind of archaic kind of laws. Right. It, yeah, it, it probably is. It may be something that's on or off the books. We'll have an answer for you by the next show. We'll find out about Excellent. that. Excellent. All right. So that was our Memorial Day issue of Lobster Tales. And I don't know what it had to do with Memorial Day, but it sounds good to call <laughs> issue, it that. Issue, whatever. So our next story does kind of have something to do with Memorial Day because it has to do with bands, and everybody yep. thinks about bands and Memorial Day. Well, Florida A&M University band uh, has a hazing case where a drum major was beaten to death with drumsticks and mallets. They were banned from band practice at football games for over a year because of this, and a bunch of the guys are going are going to be tried for murder actually manslaughter, and their defense is that the guy wanted, that the band member wanted them to do it so he could fit in with his bandmates as part of the hazing ritual. Anybody got any opinions on that one? Well, I don't buy it. Why would anybody volunteer for that? I don't care if it's going to help you fit in. That's stupid. You know, the only thing I got to say about that, yeah, you want to be part of the in crowd, and I mean, the guy obviously uh, really wanted to be a part of that band, and I guess he decided to endure whatever they were going to put him through. But unfortunately, it's led to his death at the same time. I guess and the latest with this is uh, they're suspending the band program or something for at least the next year or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Also, it's like 11, 11 band members are facing felony hazing charges on champion November 9th. Uh, 19th death in November, and one of them told investigators that the champion, the kid named Champion, wanted to be hazed. And according to the article, according to what I've read, this kid kept telling him, "Give me more, give me more, give me more, give me more." Now the question comes up: Is this that when does when does common sense kick in? When is it supposed to kick in? We say, "Hey, this guy's had enough. He's endured enough." I mean, the guy may be saying, "Give me more," but you know, if somebody tells you, "Push me out a third floor window," and you do it, one of those things that. You know, common sense has to kick in with this. I mean, Now, Gene, what do you remember about high school band? I remember in high school band, I vaguely remember maybe some kind of like freshman initiation going on. When I yeah. was also in drum corps, there was none of that because drum corps, you know, a lot more militaristic and a lot more structured than, say, high school bands are. But right. I, what do you remember back? I kind of remember some kind of freshman hazing, well, for the lack of a better I don't remember term. the exact. I don't remember the exact. It was jokes. nothing drastic. It was, so it was wasn't yeah. it more like practical was, jokes or something kind exactly. of stuff. Exactly. It was just a gentle, not malicious type yeah, thing. Yeah, do know, something like to people. embarrass the kid. That's about it. Exactly. That. Yeah. Exactly. But this has gone o overboard, man. It really needs to be stopped. I mean, you know, the truth. This is an animal house where you get down on all right, fours exactly. and say. Thank it's you, not a sir. Movie. May I have another? Yeah, this isn't a movie. Exactly. Exactly. This is real life. Well, that you know, they could have been thinking that too, thinking, oh, it's it happens in movies. Well, real life isn't a movie. Yeah. Well, these guys that did the, the hazing, they should have just thought about uh, the repercussions of doing what they did. So, where is this now, Fred? They're waiting for trials, or what? The band, uh, the band right now, they're waiting for trial on this. And they're not sure apparently where they're going to go with it because there's a. There's implications. The kid did ask for it, and 
you know, what are they going to charge him with? I mean, they're going to charge him with manslaughter, just being stupid. Right now, the band is back after a year suspend after suspension for almost right. a year. So we'll have to see. What, we're going to try and follow this and see what happens. I mean, it's it's just completely stupid. And you know, these kids, you can't just say, "Well, the kid wanted it, so I'm doing it." You know, you got to get to the point where you say, "Enough is enough is enough is enough." I guess. Does, any, does anybody uh, remember those the movie Drumline? Yeah. Did they ever do anything like that? And I was trying to think back if they did anything like that during that movie. No, not not to that extreme. I've never heard of anything this extreme. Yeah, me neither. So who uploads pictures on their cell phones, on their smartphones, whether it's to a social media site or uh, in, uh, Instagram or any of that kind of thing? Not Guilty. me. Guilty. Well, I've done it a couple of times. Well, no, it's it's actually it could save yourself some time. There's a woman that lost her, lost her, had her iPhone stolen, and, stolen. and the people that stole the phone, apparently they went on a cruise, and while they were on a cruise, they're taking pictures on the cruise ship, and the phone, because of the way she had it set up, and my phone is set up that way, uh, matter of fact, when, whenever I take a picture, I then get a text message or an email saying, from Google+, Plus saying, oh, your pictures just got uploaded to Google+. Plus." Not posted, you still have to say, go ahead and post it, but it just automatically puts it on your Google Plus account. These people that stole her phone go on a cruise, they're taking pictures. Lo and behold, unbeknownst to them, all of these pictures are getting not only uploaded to various services, but she apparently had it the default setting to where it automatically posted. All of these pictures now are getting posted online. And... and all, all of you here, there you go. They got the kid's name because um, the one guy was wearing a name tag or something. And so now they have pictures, names, and everything of these people that stole the phone. Okay, well, the best part is that she would, that, according to NPR, who Holly loves, uh, the woman who owned it, the last name of McCaffrey, had her stolen phone stolen while she was taking part in a Disney Cruise Line vacation. The pictures being automatically loaded from her iPhone appear to show a Disney Cruise Line employee named Nelson in various poses with the phone's camera. According to and Disney is, put it this way, less than pleased with the performance. The employee has been suspended pending firing. The person that used to be fired is taken about halfway out on a cruise and dumped in the water with a life raft and let Coast Guard come get him. Payback story comes on the heels of another missing iPhone story when it was revealed that the that in that Berkeley, California, chief of police had assigned 10 officers to look for his son's missing iPhone. So it's the same idea. See, so all and, of these people that are so concerned about Big Brother and these automatic postings and everything, in this case, uh, as of when this story was reported by NPR, she hadn't actually gotten her iPhone back. But for all intents and purposes, even if she never actually gets the phone back, they virtually, you know, really, like Fred says, it's under investigation. They were able to catch the perpetrators. So I don't know, you know, how bad of a thing could it be for these pictures to automatically get uploaded? And in this case, it caught the bad guys. Low jack for your phone. After the cruise line has completed their investigation, they better return her iPhone. If not... Oh, I'm sure they, they will. Think, they they, they don't. They won't give it back while there's a police investigation going on, obviously. No, but, but, once, but once the case is all yeah. settled, the, the police always return, unless it was in a murder case, which just isn't, the police will always return the recovered property back to the rightful owner. Uh, so that's so, right. so yeah. she'll get it back, as long as they recovered it. Now, they may not have recovered the phone. The kid could have tossed it overboard eventually. So the phone might be gone. But if the phone was actually recovered, she'll get it back. Well, New York Magazine reports that Disney has confiscated the allegedly stolen iPhone there you go. and placed Nelson on leave while they investigate the incident. There you go, yeah. So if the and, phone is you know, in their possession, she'll get it back. Investigation. Yeah. They got the guy dead to rights. They're going to use this to fire the kid, which is okay. And hopefully, uh, and hopefully the, uh, <laughs> the, the, in some way, shape, or form, whoever the jurisdictional uh, law enforcement body is for it, be it the Coast Guard or be it, you know, the, uh, the police department from whatever town it should leave someone goes to. Hopefully they'll charge this kid with theft and the whole bit like that. But I'm glad to see something like this going on. And speaking of getting charged with theft and all, I believe we have a story about a prison in Norway. Oh, uh, Larry, this one, brother, this one is for you. It's the uh, world's nicest prison. 
where prisoners have their own room, they have their own keys, nobody has uniforms. They kind of, they've created a holiday camp for criminals here. And the chief warden says, well, you know, the prisoner's governor says, you know, so what? We should reduce the risk of reoffending because if we don't, it's what's the point of, of punishment except to have the leaning toward the primitive side of humanity. This is in Norway, by the way, and yep. these prison does have a lower level of, uh, of uh, recidivism returning, about 16% less than any other prison in the country, and much lower than that in the United States, which is about 43%. So maybe there's something to this, but I'm not happy about it when I read this article. Well, I'm not happy either. As a matter of fact, I think that the best type of prison that they should have is one that is patterned, after military boot camp, they drag you out of bed at five o'clock in the morning and they put you through the paces, push-ups, like what was done to Richard Gere in An Officer and a Gentleman when Lou Gossett held the, held the water hose and sprayed Richard Gere while he was running in place. Stuff like that. Just, to play, just to play devil's advocate, that might be considered cruel and unusual punishment. No, just, it is. You know, you might no, just have is. to be locked away, but not no. be put through that kind of stuff. That would, oh. that's, what, that's what would happen, though. That's not cruel and unusual punishment. You break the law, that's what you deserve. Well, that's but so, the, but the Constitution doesn't say so. The Constitution protects you against cruel and unusual punishment. Tough. You're in prison. You break the law. Well, if no, you know, no, Larry. There's no tough. You uh, know, you no, live in this country. Is, you're, no, you fall under the laws of the Constitution. Not in prison. Yeah, in prison. Prisoners no, have rights. Larry, that's what it's set up for. Prisoners have for rights. So that you did, that you that you couldn't that you couldn't be beaten in prison, that you couldn't be flogged in prison. That's what all this is about. This is in the Middle Ages. Prisoners, unfortunately or fortunately, the case might be, do have rights to certain things. Now, if you go to Alcatraz and you go visit the uh, penal colony, uh, the penal institution in Alcatraz, of course, which is now closed, they have a rule. They, you can buy T-shirts. It's rule number five. You are entitled to uh, food, shelter, and medical care. Everything else you get is a privilege. That's where it stops. But you cannot just sit there and say that you're going to waterboard these people or you're going to put hoses on them. That is cruel and unusual punishment. That's violation. Or, or even make them get up in the morning and run 10 miles. You know, you just can't do that. Might help them out a lot, but you can't force right. that. But you can make them get up at 5 a.m. And, and I'm sure in almost all prisons uh, around, they do do that. You know, you get up at 5 a.m., you have to clean your cell and everything, and then by 6 o'clock, you're eating breakfast. You have, the right to cable, you have the right to cable TV. You have the right to cell phones. Yeah, right, sure. Well, cable, like, they, they do have cable TV. I don't believe they have cell phones, but cable TV, though. Most prisons don't have cell phones. There is a phone that the prisoners can use. Yeah, to make collect calls. But it is monitored. Oh, yeah, of course. As it sure. should be. Sure, just like all incoming and outgoing mail is monitored as well. As yeah. it should be. They op yeah, before the mail is delivered to the individual prisoners, they open it and they read it. They open it and they check for contraband. They cannot read it. Yeah, because that's another one of those civil rights. That's another, yeah. That, that, that's that, that's po those are postal regulations. That supersedes it. Yeah, but this is a prison. Doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. You have rights. Doesn't matter. Postal there's, there's a thing called the United States Constitution. All of this falls under that, Larry. Okay, how about this one? A couple of Read years ago. Constitution, Larry. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to hear this one. A couple of years ago, and I remember this like it happened yesterday because this prisoner had a lot of nerve. I don't know what they serve prisoners for breakfast. This prisoner, whatever they were serving in his prison, was not what he wanted. So he just demanded, what I want for breakfast is a breakfast with all the trimmings. And you know what? You're in prison. You get you get what everybody eat. else is getting. You'll get what they serve you, and if you don't like it, and then he was so ticked off that he couldn't get a breakfast with all the trimmings. He said to me, "I'll see you in court." So he talked with his court-appointed lawyer, and he was ready to. And I believe he may have taken that state's Department of Corrections to court over the breakfast. I hope he lost. Oh, I'm I'm sure he did because any prison institution is required by law to have licensed nutritionists on hand and all, everything on staff and you know there's got to be a certain amount of calories and all of that stuff licensed nutritionists are familiar with so whatever they're getting fed is more than enough to sustain them so I don't think he had a snowball's chance in hell of winning a lawsuit like that. Oh. 
But he, no, there's also there's also you gotta remember there's also dietary constraints as well. So if you have oh, you could and if and if you're a vegetarian, they they'll accommodate for you. They'll also give you a vegetarian meal if you're a vegetarian. You know, they don't have a problem with that. But what I have a problem with, it, and Larry's saying it, these that a lot of prisoners going in there, they're expecting to be molly coddled. And no, you have a this is what breakfast is today. You have the choice of this or this. And if you don't like that, then don't friggin' eat. Yeah, if I'm exactly if I'm giving you. Uh, Egg McMuffin kind of sandwich, and 2,900 other inmates are getting that Egg McMuffin sandwich. You're getting that freaking Egg McMuffin sandwich. All right, what do you have next, Fred? Well, we've all been in a situation we've wanted to just bitch slap some little bratty kid. Well, a guy apparently uh, did just that. Oh, well, he a, went above uh, and beyond a, that, huh? He went above and beyond just bitch slapping this kid, apparently. Well, uh, apparently he, uh, the, the kid was, what, the article about a noisy kid was uh, at a movie theater and he was hit by a man from Washington while watching Titanic. And apparently he pretty, he, he hit this kid, but the guy is trying to be defensible about this. I mean, he told the police he thought the the person he hit was a grown man while watching Titanic. Oh, so that makes a difference. Oh, that, that makes it right, yeah. Is it right? I mean. I got so mad, he said, when it happened, uh, Yang Hyun Kim, 21, told police he was arrested the night of April 11th at the AMC Kent Station in Kent, Washington. He's a 10-year-old kid, lost a tooth, had a bloody nose in the, con in the confrontation. I'm hoping this guy goes to jail for assault. Because what he did was wrong. I mean, there, if you have a problem with somebody making noise, you get up, you go to the manager, you talk to the manager, the manager either tells the person to be quiet or removes them. But, I mean, or you get your money back. But you don't, first of all, you don't go out and you don't assault somebody for being noisy in the movie theater. And I'll Especially tell you, if that, if that had been a grown person and the guy had hit him back. That yeah, I, uh, I love that. I didn't know it was a kid. I thought it was an adult. Gee, nope. Yeah, that really makes it right. A kid and his friends were in the back of the road behind him, and they were making all kinds of noise. They were even laughing at the guy when the guy told them to to settle down. And then he also complained that they were throwing popcorn at him. Hey, they're kids. What do you expect? They're having fun. Yeah, no, like Fred said, you know, worst case scenario, in any movie theater I've ever worked in, customer comes out with a situation like that, whether you ask the person to quiet down, settle down, or remove them or not, you're always going to give the complaining customer passes or their money back or something as well. So you go out, you complain, you're going to get passes or your money back, but you don't clobber a guy. No. I mean, this kid was 10 no. years old. I mean, and this comes, though, from a, a, a an attitude now that you can't yell at my kid. And I remember, Ed, when you and I used to hang out at your parents' house or at your father's house in Pennsylvania, or you'd come to my parents' you know, house, you would know better than come to my mother's house and say something. She'd bitch slap you in a heartbeat without thinking twice about it. That's the way we were raised. You didn't disrespect adults. When an adult told you to be quiet in the theater, you were quiet in the theater. It was that simple. And now we got kids that laugh at this guy when he's telling them to settle down. Well, you know something? Not for nothing. I may have wanted to hit these kids as well, but you don't do it. You go after the manager let the manager go after the kids. Easy enough. Well, we're still on entertainment. Hint, hint, hint. Gene, <laughs> it's all yours this week. How about our Who Cares segment? You have anything on American Idol or Dancing with the Stars? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who cares? Thank you. Thank you. And, of course, I guess it's going to be a one-sided conversation, but why don't you bring us all up to date? Okay, well, as far as Dancing with the Stars, it looks like... Oh, I can't Please remember. tell me that American Idol and Dancing with the Stars are all over for the year, and you and Holly won't be needing to talk about this every week anymore. Dancing with the Stars is over for the season. We'll be back <laughs> for the season. Yay! American Idol. American Idol, if uh, their numbers keep dropping in the ratings, they are probably... It's over for good, yeah. huh? I mean... No, no, we I, can only hope. And rightly so, because there are so many shows on right now, like American Idol. There's um, American. And it's got been talent. on eleven years or something anyway. It's running. No talent. talent. Um, you got the else? new one called Duets with Kelly Clarkson and. Uh, and they, oh no! You mean there's a new one that you and Holly are going to be talking about? Yeah, Duets. Uh, Robin Thicke is on it, along with Kelly Clarkson. What's the other one? Oh, uh, John Mayer. They're all on there, and um, what they actually do is they pick people from out in the uh, out in the states or whatever and they have that person come in and do a duet with them and then the other uh, stars in the are the judges and you get to judge that person and that whole performance it's not too bad of a show I, I got a chance to see the uh, oh, I'm sure you episode, did. but it's decent it's, it, I'm not saying it's the best unfortunately it goes in with everything else American Idol, America's got talent 
it's and what happened with your what happened new. with your Dancing with the Stars? Did Holly's uh, person win? No, it was Driver. I can't think of his first name right now. Uh, the, the football star. He uh, he won the uh, competition. Thought it was going to be Catherine Jenkins because she got some great scores at the end, but it ended up Donald Driver. Donald Driver ended up winning the uh, competition with the Mirror Ball Trophy. So. Next year we'll see the Mirable Trophy. They Not a they, so. they give out a named trophy for this thing. Yes, they do. Oh man! Anyway, so I guess it's basically so. a disco. It's basically a disco ball on a on a thing. Is what it is. So Go ahead, Larry. I guess, I guess this means that he's in the driver's seat. Oh! Oh, oh no! Oh, man. Oh. Anyway, I say we move on and we'll close the door on this entertainment segment with that. Larry, the lobster's bringing us out on a high note. Well, all of all of us except Larry the Lobster are originally from the New York area. And our next story, we remember way back 33 years ago or whatever when it first happened. Fred, why don't you bring us up to date, assuming you have some facts or figures in front of you about each little... At the time, eight, eight, what? Eight, 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 eight years old when he disappeared? Yeah, six-year-old Aton Pates who disappeared 33 years ago from New York City in 1979. He was in a New York City convenience store. A mystery that's been unsolved for the last 33 years. There's been a lot of suspects. Well, a New Jersey man accused of luring him into a store 33 years ago has confessed to killing him. Announcing the arrest of uh, weekly or Thursday, Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly told reporters that the police had received information from an individual which led them to identify a gentleman by the name of Hernandez, uh, Pedro Hernandez, 51-year-old Pedro Hernandez, as the person of interest. Now, they, they've looked at Hernandez before, among uh, other people. They're trying to figure out this guy actually did it. He had not led them yet to a body. Really can't give them a lot, a lot of pertinent information. Well, but, he has he has been charged in the crime. Oh yeah, and have. and his story is that he can't take him to a body, that he led him into the basement of this bodega, uh, by offering him soda and candy, and the six-year-old went down with him, and he strangled him, put the body the strangled body into a garbage bag and tossed it into a dumpster. Yeah. So you know, obviously the body is gone right. 33 years, so there hey. is no body. Long gone. They yeah. have a problem with it, but they said that, you know, he went, uh, Aton, remember, went, went missing on May 25th, 1979. He was supposed to be headed for his school bus. He was bus headed for something. a school bus stop for the first time, and he never made it. it, it just a couple blocks from his home in New York City, Soho uh, neighborhood. His disappearance sparked the movement to put the uh, face of missing children on milk cartons. So he the first, yeah, he was the first on the milk carton. And Aton would be, be 39 or 40 years old this year had, had he lived. We don't even know. They don't, again, they don't have a body, so they don't know what's going on. They think the kid could have been kidnapped and snuck away somewhere as well. There's no body, no evidence of foul play. They don't really have any evidence, and they're really they're, they're stumped on this one. And hopefully they'll find something. But this guy has been charged. They're looking for direction. They're looking for closure, which they should. The case received renewed attention in April when a base was excavated near where Aton disappeared. However, it's yielded no obvious human remains and little evidence that can help solve the case. So, And this, his, it, his parents never moved, and they never changed their phone number, just with the hopes that one day he would just wander back. home or exactly. try calling them. So they, they refused to move or change their phone number. That's the sad part about that one. Yeah. Oh, oh the whole thing is sad. Yeah, it is. Hmm. I think so, yeah, I, I mean, I remember that story 33 years ago, obviously. Me too, and I think it's interesting this guy ends up in Bellevue Hospital because he's crazy. Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 Could, it, well, he, could, has to be, he has to be evaluated for the you know, psychiatric evaluation. That's going to be, that, that, that's a given. That's going to be, you know, without a doubt, there's no way that any lawyer is going to defend this guy without a psychiatric evaluation. It's not possible. It happens. Of course so. not. All right, so just a little bit south of New York, we're going to head on down to... Kansas. Kansas. Down the, down the, the Wizard of Oz land. I want to give out a shout-out to Kansas, uh, the lawmakers out there, and to the governor, because Sharia law 
They've passed a ban on Sharia law in Kansas, and the United Nations is up in arms, the Arab community is up in arms, and you know something? I say good for the governor. I support this law 100%. And this comes a day after state lawmakers accused the United Nations of trying to infiltrate local governments. The Republican-controlled Kansas Senate adopted a bill banning foreign law, not just Sharia law, foreign law from being used in its courts. And I yeah, think actually, that, actually, Sharia law or Islam is not mentioned in it at all by name. It, it's just generally, like you just said, foreign law, generally speaking. I, I am going to have Tony Mazzucco on our next viewpoint discuss this in more detail. So anybody that wants to get Tony's unique opinion on Sharia law and how it affects, you know, this Kansas situation, uh, look for that in the future. But Fred, just as a lead up to whatever Tony will talk about in the future on Viewpoint, for people that aren't even familiar with what Sharia law is, maybe you could just bring them a little bit up to date. Well, I'll talk to him about what happened in Kentucky and continue into that. The, the vote for, for this ban was 33 to 3. The Senate approved the so-called Sharia law ban, and he sent it to the governor's office, he, it would, and the law would prohibit laws of foreign countries were being used to decide Kansas court cases. Now, it did not specifically name the Islamic moral code of Sharia law. Now, what this is that, according to certain aspects of Sharia law, a husband can beat his wife, he can stone her, he can even kill her under Sharia law under certain conditions. Now, you, in order to know what the conditions are, you have to go into the Koran. But what happened that as many, many people uh, in the Muslim faith are saying that they want to be able to use Sharia law in dealing with you know, what happened. If, if a guy beats his wife, he cannot be charged with with assault because under Sharia law he's allowed to do that. Well, you can't have two sets of laws governing one country. So, you know, you came to this country, you have to go by the laws that are in the country. Sharia law also requires many, many Muslim women to wear burqas, which they're not required to do in this country. It's a, a law that's based on Islamic religious law rather than being on, uh, based on uh, secular law, which is what we have. So it's, and I'm sure Tony can explain a lot better than I can. And there, there is who, yeah, and we'll get into the details on that show, but it is who in this country then that is afraid that Sharia law not take over, but will become more prevalent here. Is it citizens? Is it the government? Is, who is it that's even worried about Sharia law taking a foothold here? Well, what it is, what I think it is, that a lot of people are afraid of it taking taking effect in a non-Muslim community. And what happens that because if you allow Sharia law, in particular Sharia oh, law, you, oh, you mean you mean there's actually going to be a law then that says I can't call my Christmas tree a Christmas tree because I'm going to offend the Islamic not people? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. But what it's going to say is that under Sharia law, a Muslim, like an example, the the code. I'm trying to figure out. How, it's a code. It's hard to explain, but um. There's a, a law that says a, a, a man is in charge. What the man does is okay. The woman can't, it, it's subservient. Yeah, you, you were going to go there. A man is oh, yeah. in charge of the woman. The, way, the, the woman is, like, is, is less than the children, right. and he can do what he wants. And he can beat her, he can put her eye out, he can... There was, a, there was an 85-year-old woman that was stoned under Sharia law in one of the Muslim countries. An 85-year-old because her ankle showed underneath her... Um, but somebody her thinks program. that that would actually take a foothold in the good old and, U.S. of A? But if it, I if don't it, think it will. No, it may not, but people are afraid it will. because it, It's not even that, though. It's any kind of foreign law because, you know, you have certain laws in other countries that are contrary to what we may have. We forget that people forget that U.S. law does not automatically follow you when you leave the United States to go to no. another country. No. A case, in fact, and that is a kid that was caned five or six years ago for graffiti in cars in Singapore. Right, I remember that, yeah. People were, were objecting that, saying he has rights, and I kept telling people, no, he doesn't. His U.S. rights do not automatically follow him to Singapore. He's a U.S. national under Singapore law. Just like you know, we were talking the other week about, about slamming doors in, in Switzerland on a car door. If you go to Switzerland, you slam that car door at 3 o'clock in the morning, the cop writes you ticket, you can't claim I'm a U.S. citizen. It doesn't work that way. We talked about that when we talked about the Roman Polanski uh, case several shows uh, last year's show, about the fact that the Swiss let him go because, uh, because the United States would not provide court documents that the Swiss courts needed. And they said, well, you won't provide We let the guy go. 
U.S. law, does, uh, the, the world's law does not affect the United States, and, and their, our, their laws shouldn't affect us. Gotcha. Our laws aren't for the and we, you know, if you move here from any country, be it Switzerland, France, Germany, any of the Muslim countries, Japan, doesn't matter. You come here, you live by the laws that we have set under the Constitution. You don't change the Constitution to fit a group of people. That group of people has every right to, the, there, are, there are Jewish sects that will not work on Saturdays. They don't open their businesses on Saturdays. Well, okay, if I can't go to that deli or whatever on Saturday, I go the next day. Or I may frequent a place that works on Saturdays. But that's their right. But you can't sit there and tell me that I can't have a business open in that town if I'm not Jewish. If Because, because the town can't pass that kind of a law because that violates you know, U.S. laws. So do you know if Kansas is a first with this as legislation? Far as, I, as far as I know it is. It's the first time I've heard of it being actually signed into effect that foreign law will not affect state courts. Very interesting. Any comments from Larry or Gene before we start wrapping up? Laws in other countries just have no effect here. In other words, they laws in other countries don't exist here. Right, that's what Fred said. Just as well right, as uh, if you if we go to another country, we can't expect U.S. law to follow us there. Right. It's just like as an example. I don't know if any of you remember this, but you might. What Fred mentioned earlier about the citizen of the United States who, with the citizen of Singapore, they went around scratching the paint jobs on parked cars. And they were both caught. And, of course, the penalty in Singapore is caning. That's the law in Singapore, and there's nothing that the U.S. can do about it. But President Clinton tried to intervene, and he tried to convince them not to subject the citizen of the United States to that punishment, which, of course, they just ignored his request. Well, they didn't ignore it. They reduced it to five from 15, but still. They shouldn't have reduced it at all because their law is their law. And yeah, I, I agree. I agree with you, Larry. As a matter of fact, it should be wherever you are, that law should govern what you experience, not, you know, go into each other as far as, you know, U.S. law goes into Islamic countries or whatever. It should be specific to that country and that that punishment should be for that country, not any other country. That Again, we don't carry citizenship ID cards. Problem is that under under Miranda versus Arizona, when a person's arrested, you are advised of your constitutional rights. Now, the problem I have with that, and I don't have, again, it's important, but those rights are only guaranteed to U.S. citizens. And this is where the problem comes in. And when you arrest someone who's not a citizen, we allow them to partake of those rights as a privilege. And people have to make that distinction. Now, if Holly was on this program, she'd be going up the wall right now. But the idea is we don't carry ID cards. We have to make an assumption the person is a citizen, and they are afforded the same guarantees. But they're not automatically guaranteed those guarantees. You know, I am a proponent for the ID card because I think everybody should carry one. If you're voter registration, you're voter, yeah, you already have one. Only citizens can vote. But... That come, brings on another issue. When you, you know, when you go to another country, remember what I said, you are a U.S. national in another country. If I go to visit my, con my cousin in Switzerland, I am an American citizen in Switzerland in a foreign country traveling on a visa. I am subject to the laws of that country. Now, any civilized country would treat you with the same accord that we do normally. If, you, if they read you your rights in England and you're arrested, they will read you your rights. They'll advise you of your, of your right. They do that in most civilized countries because they do the same thing we do. They afford people the same privileges, but they don't have to. Sounds good. <laughs> well, another, th another thing that's going to sound good. I think it's time for our third installment because we have a one-to-one -one tie here of the lobster stumps the announcer. Dump, dump, dump. Come on, Larry. Let's see if we can get him. I'm hoping I can because this is a one-hit wonder. Ooh, okay. love one-hit wonders. Well, uh, Gene's uh, going to get this one. I, I know you're in one-hit wonders, Gene. Maybe not, but I'll give it a try. Why I don't know why I came here tonight. I got the feeling that something ain't right. I'm so scared in case they fall out of my chair, and I'm wondering how we'll get down the stairs. Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right. Yeah, so? That's the, that's the clue. That's the line from the song. Yeah, I know the song. So do I. I who did that. Five, four, three, two. Any last-minute guesses? Uh, okay, tell us, Larry. Right, stuck in the middle with you. Steelers wheel, Jerry Rafferty. Steelers wheel, that's right. Oh, oh so boy. Larry takes oh, the lead two to, two to one. one. Okay, so everybody's going to have to tune in again next week to see if Gene could tie the series back up. 
So there we are for our Memorial Day <laughs> episode of As We See It. And other than talking about Crashing Glass Podcast, which did a Memorial Day show, we weren't really much of a Memorial Day show. But go out and watch your Memorial Day parade if you get the chance. Have your barbecue. And happy Memorial Day, everybody. From Boston, Massachusetts, I'm Ed Jupin. From uh, the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania, I'm Fred Boas. Somebody wake up the lobster? I'm here, and from Brooklyn, Massachusetts, I'm the lobster. And from Los Angeles, California, I'm Gene White. And on behalf of us, we hope you have a fun and safe Memorial Day. And tune in next time for As We See It right here on BaseNet Television.